Hey everybody, it's the test lead and today's video is unit testing versus integration testing versus system testing explained. The testing phase is one of the most essential phases of the software development lifecycle process. The different types of testing discussed in this video can be executed through both manual and automated tests. But how do you know which test is best for certain parts of the application testing? How do you know you'll get the full test coverage? This video will cover unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and finally, why do we need all these different types of tests? Everything discussed in this video will be linked in the description below. Unit testing. A unit test can be seen as the first building block of testing. The unit test should test the smallest part of code that you can isolate in a system. Unit tests should not rely on any external systems or factors. This includes interacting with the database, file system, or any other configurations. Next, you might be wondering, who should be creating the unit test? It is suggested that the developer who created the code creates the unit test for the code. This is part of the development phase. This is because they are most familiar with the code base and different parts of it. They will also be able to know what should be mocked so each part can be tested as a standalone unit. It is easiest to pinpoint what is causing bugs in this part of testing because every part is isolated. So let's say you create a function that takes two positive numbers and adds them together. Test one, you give the function two positive numbers and confirm it returns the correct output. Test two, you give the function a negative number and a positive number and confirm an error message is thrown because the function should only take positive numbers. Test three, you give the function a string which is a group of letters and a positive number and confirm that an error message is thrown because the function should only receive positive numbers instead of letters. Next, integration testing. Integration tests are the step up from the unit test that we just discussed. The purpose of integration tests is to verify how different units and modules of the software interact with each other. The reliance on different modules and should be tested in this phase and we'll also test how data is being shared between different modules. Next, you might be wondering who creates the integration test as you did for the unit test. Just like the unit test, this can be done by the developer or by a software tester who is familiar with the software being tested. There is usually less integration tests than unit tests. Example, you create an application that takes two positive numbers from user's input, adds them together, and then returns the sum to the end user. Test 1. You prompt the user for an input and pass their sheet value to their function we tested in the unit test. Then check to make sure that the input typed in from the end user has the same value as what's getting passed into the function. This differs from the unit test because prior, we were directly passing a value into the function. Now we are receiving the value from user input. The different entities that are being tested here are the addition function that you have created as well as the part of the application that interacts or receives information from the end user. Test 2. You receive a value returned from the function and now you want to verify that the value is turned properly to the end user. This is similar to the test we just did previously. The different entities being tested here are the addition function that you created as well as the part of the application that interacts and displays the information to the end user from the function. And now system test. This test a complete user workflow. Because the test usually include many different aspects, they often are larger and take longer to run than a unit and iteration test. System testing is usually done by a dedicated tester. The goal should be to have as few system tests as possible because all the specific different flows should have been tested in a unit and integration test. Example, you create an application that takes two positive numbers from user's input, adds them together, and then a sum is returned to the end user. Test one. Remember this is end to end going through the full user workflow. First, you go to the website where the application is located. You then navigate to the addition application and verify it's located where it's supposed to be. You then put two positive integers, 7 and 3, into the prompt and verify you return the correct sum, 10. You then verify that you are successfully able to close the application. This test is different than the two previous types of tests we discussed. It goes through the complete user flow as if they were accessing the application instead of just pinpointing certain parts of it. It's always good to have at least one negative test also in system testing. Test 2. First, you go to the website where the application is located. You then navigate to the addition application and verify it's located where it's supposed to be. You then put in two invalid values, A which is a letter, and negative three, instead of prompt, and verify your return an error message, and value values being inputted. You then verify you're still successfully able to close the application. 
This test is very different than the unit iteration test as you've seen. Just like test one of the system tests, it goes with the complete user flows if they were accessing the application. But this tests one negative flow that the user may experience when using the application. Why do we need all these different types of tests? The earlier we can catch up bug and defects in the software development lifecycle process, the easier it is to fix them. All these tests should also be written out in a testing plan to ensure a different testing coverage. All these tests should also be written out in a testing plan to ensure a different testing coverage. Unit testing is needed to test all the different variations that the developed application may experience. Integration tests serve the same purpose. Because these tests are smaller, it allows for testing the different variations efficiently. System tests are more high level and testing complete user flows. It mimics a usual end user experience, such as actually navigating to the application, using the application, and then closing the application. Because these tests are longer, it would be less efficient to try to test all different possible variations here. This is why we lead the different variation testing to the unit and integration tests. Most importantly, this should all be communicated while creating a test plan to make sure the full test coverage is created. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.